What up? I'm back. <laughs> the day is the August 10th. Uh, I just got through painting one. Dude, this one, I like it a lot. It's fire. It's a... Uh, there's a lot of stuff in it. I, I didn't get to look at it too much. <sighs> but there's a lot of stuff in it that is uh, crazy. And I'll... I can't wait till I can look at it longer um, and from different angles. A lot of my art is really freaking crazy. Where um, during the process of me creating, you can see a lot of things the way that the video camera is set up. If you get a side view, and um, I know in the future I'm gonna I'm gonna look at that better. I'm gonna because um, I may stop painting early um, in the future, and um, because of the side views. And um, it's crazy because it's crazy. It's crazy. I don't know how to do it. I, I don't know how, what I'm going to do yet. But um, there's just, because I've watched the video, when I watch my videos, like, dude, there's so many different scenes and progressions in my paintings. And um, it's not like they're not good either. They're like crazy, like crazy faces in it and stuff like that, man. It's, it's ridiculous. But whatever, dude. I, uh, Dude, the first part of my painting today was sick, dude. I loved it. I don't know what it is. For some reason, it looks like, um, I don't have it with me. I don't have a, I'm talking. But it looks like a girl. For some reason, I thought it was going to be me. And, um, but it wasn't. It, um, it was a girl with headphones on. Um, a dog for some freaking reason. I have no idea where the dog came from. It just, whatever I felt until I, I drew it. Um, then it's got lightning bolts and it's raining, but it's raining down because <laughs> it's so hot because it's freaking fire. And, um, like all of it is just crazy. Like the, the strongest things in the world, like it's surrounding this, this girl and, um, she got headphones on. I don't know if she's singing or, or what, um, maybe it's just her in general is, um, and she's just all the things, um, all the power. All the crate, like this, I don't know, almost like me, like a female version of me. You know, if I say that I'm all these things, and I am, and um, people would not feel like that. <laughs> but I don't care. And because um, I know who I am, I've done the work to do who I am. I understand that when you step into your power, your confidence, you are those things. There's nothing that can stop you. And um, except, you know, creator himself. And um, if it's up to him, it's his will, whatever. And um, you know, I have no control over that, but, um, he's the boss, I'm not. I'm just living life every day, you know? But whatever, it's cool, man. And that one was a lot of songs. Like, I picked a, I picked a one song, and it was called Get Out of My Head. Um, that's where it started, that's why I started the, the, the face. Um, and then, I forgot to hit the button to play the song on repeat, so we just went through it. I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna leave it alone. And so it went through many songs during that process of the spray paint part of my painting. And, um, it's fire, dude. I like it. It's cool, man. I, uh, it's just fun to me. Because it's like a different, it's a totally different style in the painting. And so it's, it's totally different. And it's like, in my head, I'm going, man, which I can recreate that any time. Like, once I have the picture. Like, I talked to a guy today, and, um, he was like, telling me I should go, um, Maybe go get some lessons or something like that, or, you know, start painting things that, um, <sighs> he wasn't, I get where he's coming from, he's like, he was telling me, like, I should go paint things that, that I can sell, right? You know, that way, and I was like, dude, I've already thought of this a hundred times, like, I was like, I thought about this, where I could go and I could recreate anything I want, because I'm capable. And I pointed to a picture on the wall, and I said, I can paint that. Like, it's not an issue. I said, but I am painting like a child, because my child version of Cody is painting. You know, this was part of the agreement that I made with Little Hoss. I was like, you, this is yours. I'm just the vessel. But, but being that I neglected you, and didn't take care of you for 35 years, then you get a redo. Because the adult version of me made a mistake. And the adult version of me has to pay for that mistake. And in doing so, I'm going to allow my little version, me, Cody, the best 
the feelings, the emotions, the love, which are really good ass traits, probably the best traits in the world, and the nurturing, that they are the best traits. I don't, why would I not want them, you know? I'm going to let them, the majority of, dictate my life. And um, it's only fair. Now, I co-create with, with Little Hoss, and I, you know, um, use my logic and adult brain and all this crap, and uh, my animal side, and um, right now I'm in really, really pretty good in control of my animal side right now. And um, it's kind of on the back burner. Um, um, just for now. But, you go. <laughs> I'm a monster. <laughs> I'm behind a cage, so. Uh, the longer that I control my animal side, it's just going to build up and build up and build up. And then, um, when I go to use it, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be fun. Because I'm going to have a lot of pent-up aggression and whatnot. So, um, whatever. It's going to be a fun week, you know. And, um, but I know that's me. That's Cody. Like, I get it. I get it know that I am an animal I just when I walk around the world people don't see it now a lot of the, it's crazy like the way I've lived from since January especially these new people that's walked into my life they only see the love nature nurture Cody and um and I've told them and I tell them all the time I was like look I'm a monster you have no idea who I am I am capable of a lot of things and I am an animal and, um, but, but a lot of that, the animal traits, they're not for the world, you know what I'm saying? They're, you know, whatever, it's, it's part of it. And I understand it, and I'm, I'm in control of my anger now, I don't have it really. I'm in control of all that stuff, like, there's ne, I hate to say never, there's not, like, I'm good. For the rest of my life, my anger is under control, it, it's pretty much non-existent, um, because I can just walk away. I'm more of a man than I've ever been. I'm more capable of controlling all those negative sides of me. Like, I'm good. And, um, because I just leave. It's not worth my peace to be in somebody else's presence. And uh, that's one thing you got to learn is, like, who cares what you, if you make somebody mad? Like, leave. Like, you leaving, if you hurt somebody's feelings, make them mad, it's about protecting yourself. This whole world is about protecting yourself. And I'm understanding that more and more and more that I... I'm not a people pleaser anymore. I'm not. I want you to be the best version of yourself and I want you to be happy. I don't care if you're if I'm pleasing you or not pleasing you, if I'm displeasing you, making you anger, angry, making you cry. I, I hate to make you cry, but um that's not my purpose. My purpose is to make you better. Sometimes you gotta you gotta do and say things that are going to push somebody's buttons. They're going to push them over the edge so they do have to look at that and dwell on what, what I just spoke. And a lot of times, um, I do it now in a weird kind of way where you don't really understand it 90% of the time, like I said. And then, you know, a week later, um, you're sitting by yourself and that little thought will come in your head about Cody said this and um, it's going to break you. <laughs> and I love it. I don't know why. Um probably because I do it to myself and I break myself all the time and it's a surprise and I love surprises so um but I know I've done this all the time like I I've done it my whole life um I was just more mean about it in the past and uh, I was just more I was just dude I don't understand how intelligent I, I never knew how intelligent I was um until really recently and I was like dude like because I used to do all this stuff these manipulation tactics and and these high-level word problems, I guess you would call it. Um, plus, I, I remembered, I, I always remember specific um, sentences and phrases that people say. And back in the day, I would, I would, yeah, I would just store them in my head. Like, and I would instantly remember them because I knew I was going to use it against them at some point. And it wasn't me technically going to use it against them. I was just going to repeat it. Because they told me it. And I'm going to tell them it. It's almost like a, it's a tit for tat type of thing. And um, it's always been that. Well, you give me something and I give you exactly the same thing in return. And therefore, when I do stuff like that, it's not technically me creating or conniving or making up these new things. It's I am literally 
mirroring what you gave me. And um, it hurts so much more when that happens. And uh, it makes real change. That's why I don't like liars. Because um, you're ultimately lying to yourself. Because I, if I mirror that lie that you gave me, it, it's just your lie. You know, but if you tell me the truth and then I use that truth against you or I just bounce that truth back to you, then that's when it can cut open a wound. And when you cut open a wound, wound, you have to, it will have to heal. So you have to look at it, you have to dress the wound, and then you have to let it heal. And um, that's just a lot of what I do. It really is. And, and over time, like, I don't even have to say anything. Like, there's many times when I'm with people and they just talk and I don't say anything. And that really, um, like, because a lot of stuff doesn't deem a response. And um, I kind of remember one night I was sitting across the table from somebody. And they were talking and talking and, um, like, I had nothing to say. <laughs> like, it was weird to see it. Because I see it from, like, a th- uh, another perspective. Where it's almost like I was watching myself and that person talk. And I was watching me just like I have nothing to like just sit there. And because I was like I had nothing to say. Like I had no response. And um, I've gotten better at doing that because a lot of times in life there is no need for a response. Because the other party is just looking for attention. Or looking for you to be on their side. And that's kind of when I stopped judging. It was back then. Actually, that day, um, yeah, because that's when I gave unconditional love. And um, when I gave that unconditional love to someone else outside of me, um, that's when I began to unconditionally love everyone and not judge anyone because I already quit judging myself. And um, I still judge myself a little bit um, to correct myself as I go through, but I don't do as many things that I need to judge anymore. And um, because I, I judge before I do the act now and um that that's a thing and it, and, and, and it is because you're smart enough as a human being like you know the repercussions of what you're fixing to do like you do know this you already know this you've known this about every action in your life you, that's what's super weird is like you kind of are going through life judging yourself before you do the acts and you're deeming them okay and um Even though you know they're not. So it's almost like you're lying to yourself. But uh, whatever. To each his own. But you have to be more aware. And you got to slow down a little bit. And um, you got to think about more than just yourself. Because a lot of, I mean, if you're, if you're only thinking about yourself going through life. And the repercussions going to happen to you. Um, then I can see why you continue to do bad stuff to other people. And, it, and you think it's okay because you're not even caring. Or you don't even understand... Or think about the repercussions of other people. And what I've always kind of tried to do that. Now me walking away from people sometimes. It's like I can't. Like I justify it in my head. Because it's like dude I don't. I've told you. I told you I wasn't coming back. I mean I wasn't going to be here. And um. And everyone that I walk away from. I, I, I tell them. You know like I go through cycles. And I got your back anytime you need me. But you have to be the one to reach out to me. And um. I'll reach out and keep reaching out. But. Like I said, I have my own life and you have your own life and, and this is a season. And there's only, like I said, that's why there's only like, whatever. The new version of Cody, like once I find my family and um, stuff like that, that's going to be a little bit different. But right now, like I am still in, in the transition of walking away from my past completely. Um, and kind of walking away from my old life completely and then stepping into my new one. So there's still a few people that are kind of in the in the in between, I guess you would call it. And um, but evidently I'm not done helping those people, and they're not done helping me. And um, so this is just kind of a weird transition period um, to just help us each other as much as we can, as long as we still have time. And I understand the process, like it's cool. And uh, but it's been different, and it, it's it's. It's kind of difficult. Um, I don't dwell on it too much, but I just keep going and going and going. But when you built your life 
and your worth on working and then when you, you take a year and you're not working as much you're not doing as much you don't have as much money in the bank anymore and um, it still dwells on you even though I don't need it I don't really care about it you know still there's still a percentage of me that that feels less than and um, and kind of questions it over and over again even though I'm walking in total faith towards the future but um it still kind of dwells on you a little bit and um you still maybe I don't know I, I really I don't doubt it um but I don't doubt it at all I don't doubt what's coming I don't doubt it I know it's coming I'm just being patient and that's the best way for me to word it and um just every day I'm just trying to be patient and still and um just allow things to play out because I know it takes time and um before I know it everything will be going crazy and I'll be non-stop busy and um just enjoying life and and loving life and I, I love it already so it's like everything is just extra and um it's cool man it's cool. This song is fire. It's another summer song. Just it's called "Give Me Summer." Um, <laughs> so like I was, I picked a bunch of other songs, and then this come, came on today, and I was like, "Well, this is it. I this is the, every summer song that comes on. I have to paint to it. Number one because I like it." Um, I like summer a lot. It's awesome. It produces something cool every single time. Um, summer is my muse, and um, it's gonna be my muse until probably forever. I, uh, it is what it is, and um, I'm fine with it. I'm cool with it. Little Hoss loves it, so he's. This is his his choice it's his life and um whatever and I, I i love it a lot i love it a lot it makes me happy i don't have a choice like i really don't have a choice like i uh it is what it is and um <sighs> can't help it it makes me laugh it's fun it's everything i want and need and so it does what it needs to do and um fine like I didn't really get to see the sunset too much the clouds were cool it rained today it rained hard as crap today today was fire day what a, I went and ate lunch with the guy today um, we've been kind of every week we kind of eat lunch together and I go do a little bit of work for him and we just hang out we talk you know we both you know had a death in the family like his was before mine and um, we kind of both helped each other out during this process a little bit and um, it's cool man because he really loves me doing art and um, and I see, I can't wait. He's cool, man. And uh, he sees, like, like I see the passion in him. And I guess he sees the passion in me. And he's always just trying to help me, help me. And um, and like I said, today when he told me, he's like, well, you know, you probably, you know, he's like, don't take it the wrong way. But, like, you got to start making stuff that, like, people will buy. And I'm like, dude, I know. I've thought about this. I've thought about this. And I, I was like, but... In my brain, I'm doing everything, I told him, I'm doing everything a very specific way for a reason. And I said, I can mimic anything in this world. I don't have a problem with that. The issue is, this is my art. This is the way I'm doing stuff. And if I recreate things that sell, to me, in my mind, in my body, in my blood, in my heart, in my soul... I would be surrendering and selling my soul. I could be rich as hell in a matter of minutes. I get it. I get it. I thought about this numerous times because I can mimic anything in this world. Like I'm the best. I can do what it takes to be the best at whatever I want to do. Um, and I, especially if it's already, if I just have to look at it, I can recreate it. It's very simple. It just takes time. And I was like, I'm not gonna sell my soul. I, I, I made an issue of this when this whole journey started because I knew what was coming and I was like I, I cannot sell my soul I can't do things that the people that sell to the people because they that's what everyone else is doing 
I had a conversation with a YouTube uh, influencer and we were talking and, and she's like, I got to watch all this content every day just to keep up with what people want. And she says, I, I, I don't like it. It, it sucks. And I said, yeah, it's because you, it's like you're selling your soul because you're going against your authentic self. And so it's like, it's like, I, I don't want to do that. I don't care if my stuff sells or doesn't sell. I don't care what it is because I'm going to do my best every single day and I'm going to do what makes me happy. And it will succeed no matter what. It's just going to take time because ultimately anyways, what this world needs is authentic people. Because we're sitting in a world that's controlled by marketing, like literally marketing the media. So everyone wants to be the same. So what the world needs is the opposite of that. Everyone, the world needs individual people to stand up and to be the mock, be mocked at, be made fun of, be lied on. You know, there's no telling what people are telling other people about me right now. And I'm fine with it. I, I get it. I don't see why you would be mad at me or why you wouldn't like me or why you would lie on me. Or why you'd be envious of me. Or why you'd be any of those things. I don't see why you'd be that way about anybody. I've already told you. If you need something. Why would you be jealous of somebody? Just go get it. Go get it. If you really want my life. Come over here get it. You know like. My life is not easy bro. My life is not easy now. I'm just a different human being. I just know who I am. I'm confident in myself. These are all traits that you have within yourself, go get them. Do the work and get them. Quit pity pouting, crying. Because you think my life is better because it's, it's not, it's just my life. I've created my life the way it is. It's not better, it's not worse than. And I don't care what your life looks like and honestly, I don't care. That's just end of discussion. I just want you to be happy. I just want you to be confident. I just want you to overcome your trauma and your past. I just want you to love on other people. I just want to love you. I want to give you the benefit of the doubt. I have endless hope for you. But you can't change if you're worried about outside other people. Like That's the whole point of all of this. Give yourself time. You're in control of your own world. If you're miserable, it's because you're miserable. If you're jealous, it's because you're jealous. Like that's why you're miserable. It's because you're so busy focusing on what you don't have. When all you need to do is focus on what you do have. Figure out, see how that works. And if you don't have something, figure out a way to go get it. Break down your life. See what you really need. You don't need 350 pairs of shoes. You know, you don't need 75 of those and 65 of these and 10 of these and 11 of those. Like you only have two hands. Like in my brain, I look at life and the time of day. I look, at, I look at time in a day and it's like, I have two hands. And it's like, I understand it's cool. I have a lot of stuff. You know, I got a lot of tools. I got a lot of stuff. Most of my stuff is tools. You know, I don't have a lot of extra things. I've got some three wheelers, some four, some lawn mowers. All my stuff makes me money, and um, pretty much anything that I have, like I've always bought it to make me more money. And um, I never really bought a lot of entertainment stuff. I got a computer. You know. I'll play video games on that and um, use it as a media source. I don't have a TV. And um, well, I have TVs in the house. I just don't, they're not even plugged up. I need to just throw them away. But um, someone can come get them. But um, yeah, look at all, all my, what would you call it, materialistic stuff. Like, I don't have much um, extra. I really don't. Um, and I look and it, it's like, I don't need anything else. I don't even have time to use other stuff. Like I don't have time to do this. I don't have time to do that. 
I would like to make music in the near future. Um, but I also need room too. And then it's like, and then when would I have time to dedicate to learn music? And so like, which I think my body already knows music pretty well. And um, I think it would just, I just need to re-trigger myself um, to bring those memories back. And um, but whatever, I don't know. And, and that's what I'm saying. It's just like, I look at my life and it's like, I can only wear one pair of shoes a day. Or at a time. And I just start to understand. It's like I'm not buying anything else. Like I made money today. And I instantly went and bought paint. And I told the guy today. I was like dude. I was like cool man. Appreciate the money for working. Um, I'm going to go buy paint. <laughs> I was like because I don't care about anything else. Like, I don't care about anything else. Like I, When I say that I'm addicted to it. I am addicted to painting. I'm addicted. Addicted to sitting in my truck and giving myself time. I'm the first to tell you. I'm addicted to myself. We can. Some people can call it a habit. I can call it a habit too if I want. But I think habit and addiction are the same thing. And there may be a slight difference. But when I don't give myself time, I have so-called withdrawals. I can tell the difference when I don't give myself time. But um this is important to me like this is the only thing that matters completely to me it's giving myself time making myself the best version for me and I love human beings and all that stuff I do but it's like if I'm not my best self like I said when I'm with humans and I can't give them what they the best of me I don't know if I'm giving them what they need or not I'm doing my best every single day I'm just trying to hold up my side of the interaction. I'm just trying to make sure that I do my part. If they do their part or not, that's, that's on them. But my rules, my goal, my purpose is to be the best version of me every single day. That's all I can, can control. That's all I can do and that's all I can want for myself. So when I leave you, hopefully I did the best I could be during that time and then that's it you know the painting was fun man I can't wait to look at it because it looks crazy it almost looks like shadowed at one point in time it almost looked like you know I, I could see like some Star Wars like big things walking in the back in the sun and like but now I did see like someone dancing in it I did see um some other stuff, and a lot of my art is is meant to be that way. A lot of my art is meant to be um, truly abstract, where it's just like whatever flows in it is, is what flows, and whatever you you pick pick up from it, that's what it is. You know what I see? It may be something different, but it's also me creating the piece, and it's also coming out of me. So there probably is going to be a lot of dancing. Um, movements like that stuff like that and people doing certain things in it you know and um that's my that's because it's coming out of me it's kind of what i don't know and um i just let it happen you know but whatever <laughs> the day was cool man it dude it rained hard today and i i did a job today and i don't know what i did put up like eight or nine lights real quick and hung some doors and a bunch of other random stuff that i wasn't expecting to do today but it all worked out in the end and it was perfect and um it is cool to have, like, all these skills, even though I don't care about them. And I, I told the guy today, I was like, man, I'm, you know, I I know I'm just walking in here every now and then. And we're just meeting every week and just doing some work. And I'm doing some work for you. And um, I was like, but, man, I'm just done with it. Like, I'm truly done with it. And um, I'm just doing what I have to do to survive. But uh, it just does nothing for me. It's not good. It's not bad. I just do it in the moment. Um, it's not negative, it's just like, it's autopilot, you know, and it's just like, here's the problem, and I just fix it in a matter of seconds, you know, a matter of minutes, and then. it's cool to have a skill level now that's like, really high and fast, but at the same time, it's like, I don't want any part of it, and, um, at least not right now, man, like, my, I just want to help people, and I, um, I'm gonna help people. 
and I am helping people. And um I wanna do that in art, man. And um really make change and like I understand and I think that's why I'm still kinda stuck in this business a little bit like I am is because I'm helping people um that I need to help and the only way that I'm gonna be able to help them is by being with them in situations like this and um work situations and maybe that's what I'm saying is maybe I'm just kind of ending the chapter with these humans and um this is kind of the end of it and um before I know it I'll be in a new world and uh, I already am in a new world I'm just kind of you know dot my eyes and uh crossing my T's and stuff. I was hoping I was to see the moon tonight. I don't know if I will. It's pretty cloudy. Um, and again, I am pretty tired. I actually slept pretty good and long last night. Um, but I don't know, man. My body's crazy right now. I don't know what what's going on. I'm just trying to lift. Every day, and I'm having fun. This morning, I went. Um, I had to meet this guy at a certain time, and I went and got some fruit this morning. And it was freaking fire! It was so good. And um, and then I went. I just went to the park because I had probably an hour and ten minutes before I had to meet him for lunch. And so I just went to the park, and I was listening to my talk from last night. And last night's talk was fire. It's so fire, like. Um, that's one talk that I may listen to more and more, even though I already understand it. I already understand how time works. Now I just need to implement it more focused. Um, but it's crazy, like. So I went to the park and I was just chilling, listening to my music. And I got some cool pictures of the sun and stuff. And I found a little rock. It's right here, man. And um, it's crazy. It looks like a little heart. And um, it's super fire. And this is my life. And it's like I, I just walk around the world and I'm just aware watching, looking. And um, just watching the ants. There was like a, a timber. And the ants were just coming out of this little hole. And I don't know, it was crazy. And then the fish, like there was fish in the water. And I could take my shadow and I could like hit them with my shadow finger. And they would jump. <laughs> and then uh, there was this fire dragonfly, dude. It was... It was fire. It was blue, like almost like a flat blue, like jet blue, dude, or like sky blue dragonfly. And it was the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. And, um, dude, I don't know. My life is just fun. And, and it's just like just taking time to be still, to be silent, to not even really talk or think, yeah, I'm listening to music or I'm listening to my talks. But, um, you know, last night before I went to bed, I tried to just turn my stuff off and just chill and be quiet. And um, I can't remember. I think I had some dreams last night, but they were weird. Um, and they start writing them down. But um, every day is just cool. Every day is fun. Every day is just uh, exciting. And I just never know what's going to happen. Like... Oh, I went and fixed the door too, like, real quick. Took me like four minutes, five minutes, but that solved the problem. But, um, I don't know, man. It's, it's cool, man. It's, <laughs> it's cool to just live life, but I don't know, man. I don't know. I'm just still trying to figure it out because it's like, I know what I want to do every day, and it's paint and talk and so then I look at like the rest of my day it's like what do I want to do what do I need to do during that time I I need to make money um, but it's like but I, I want to help people and it's like how do I create something I can make enough money to live and help people and then I still have time to pay and give and then give myself time every single day
Because, like, whatever, the work that I do is fine. It's not bad anymore. Like, but it's, at the same time, it's just like, I miss opportunities with humans. Because I tend to be by myself, and that's, where, that's what gets me. That's, like, the kicker. It's like, if I do the work that I've always done, then I'm always by myself. And then, as time goes on, like, it's less, less, less opportunities to meet people, you know? And so it's like, I know that I can't do that type of work, even though it's endless money and it's good money. It's 1% type of money, but I don't, um, I just don't, I just don't care, you know? And it's like, because people are the reason, people are the reason for what I do. The people are the reason why I'm here. And I need to meet as many and and have as many opportunities with them as I can. And um, so it's just like, how do I touch as many people as possible and come in contact with as many people as possible? So I'm still just trying to figure it out. I don't know what the right call is. And um, I just don't know. I don't know. I need to just get a hold of somebody, actually, I guess. But whatever, man. It's cool. The painting was fun. The painting is so much fun to me. Like, really, like, now all I can think about is, like, going back in there and looking at it. And, like... I don't know. I don't know. Whatever, though. Tomorrow I gotta go do, like, a honeydew list. And, um... Fix a couple things and um, it ought to be easy. I need to look at that in the morning, anyways, before we get some material at the store. But, um, I don't know, man. It, it's cool. Life is cool. And, um, I don't know. Who knows what's going to happen, man? And that's, that's a lot of, of my life. It's just, I just don't know. What's happening? What's gonna happen? Um, what's next? I'm just going with the flow, and it's super fun. It's super fun. I do kind of feel kind of bad because I'm I uh I'm not seeing people as much like this week. Um, but I also had to change some stuff up, you know, and um I don't know, man. You just, sometimes you overthink still. And I don't really overthink too much. Um, I really don't think much at all. Except for these talks. <laughs> and um, it, sounds, it sounds funny to say. But because uh, like I said, the, the whole day I'm listening to myself talk. And I'm kind of, that's what's so crazy. It's like, I, when I'm listening to myself talk, my brain is kind of quiet. And a lot of times I... I'm talking with myself talking. It's really weird to explain. Um, but it helps me understand and get it better, I guess. And um, I can reform stuff while I'm listening to it. Like if, if a thought was incomplete um, or something was said wrong, I can repeat it and make it new as the day goes on. And um, it's just part of the process of what I'm doing. But... My customer bought me some more canvas material today, and um, <laughs> I was like, dude, appreciate it. I was like, I was going to buy some because I thought I was out. And uh, I was like, well, I have to paint, dude. I got to paint today, and I got to. And um, I'm glad I did. It's, it's different. It's a different little bit of style, um, but it's cool, man. And, you know, I a lot of my painting, what what's fun is, like, I know I could have put some stuff in it in the dark and let it made it shadowy. Like I gotta put palm trees in it, and because the second song I listened to was called like Island, and I could have um, I could have done that, and I thought about doing it, and I was like, you know what? I'm just I really like the randomness of of just putting black and white paint, because it's kind of like the last stage for me is using black and white, and um, I really enjoy the contrast, the opposites um, that the black and white give me, because the totality of my life is that. It's black and white. The gang and the gang. And um, 
That's like the reason I'm living. The reason why I had to live the way I did was to understand. And then co and then create it together. Combine the black and the white together. And um, the opposites together. The good and the bad. You know, the mean and the nice. And the love and the hate, I guess. I don't know what I ever really hated other than eating with your mouth. Like smacking. But, um, uh, and honestly, like, I probably used to, I, used, I really used to dislike people. Um, because, like, if they instantly lied to me or they were trying to manipulate me or use um, a narcissist or stuff, I used to not like them at all, man. Like, and, and there's some, there's, you know, but then when I learned that unconditional love for myself and I understood that why I did what I did over, over my lifetime, every time something came up and I had to make a decision, it's all based on all my experiences that I had before then. And so this is where I came with compassion because I was like, no matter what decision I made at any given time in my life, I made the best decision I thought based on all the previous information up until that point. Therefore, whatever outcomes came with it, like I got to forgive myself because I made the best decision based on all the information I had. Yeah, my information could have sucked. My inc information could have been wrong my information could have been collected from tv and movies and bad childhood and neglect and abuse and whatever else like and so like i had to have compassion for myself because it's like everything that i've done in my life is based on that information all the information that i picked up from all around me everything i saw and knew and thought to be true thought to be the way it was supposed to happen if you grew up in life and you just always saw your dad getting drunk and beating your mom, you'll kind of think that that's probably the right way. You may feel bad about it. You may not like it. But if you never saw any other way, if you never knew that there was another way, like, that's going to be your best decision in life because that's what you saw. And um, like that's how you kind of dictate how you choose things. And maybe you want to choose the opposite. I've talked to people that said that they didn't want to do what they saw in life and a lot of us do do that a lot of us you know are able to imagine the opposite of things and then choose to do that um and then some people just kind of fall into the cycle that they saw and it's subconsciously programmed into you and um so it's just whatever you do like each person's different and um it's life. It's, it truly is life. And because trauma and stuff is, is deep rooted, man. And um, like if your parents are a little, you know, narcissist and crazy and like you tend to, to be the same, it's just because you've lived that life and you were in that energy the whole time. And it, it is part of you until you can break it, until you give yourself time and, and do what it takes to uh, overcome it. I don't know. Life is fun, man. And um, I'm just trying to make it every day and just keep doing my thing. And um, it'll all work out in the end. It'll all work out in the end. <laughs> my art's so fun, dude. <laughs> I cannot explain it. It's so fun. Super excited to go back in there and look at it. Um, especially this one, because this one's more of like the other ones were more detailed. And I, at, at one point in time, I said I looked at this one. I was like, man, I could find something in here, but I was like, nah. There, I did see something in here, and I was like, no, I'm gonna make this one different than the one from the previous one, which was more detailed. People, I was like, nah. I'm not gonna do it because this landscape is, is made for a landscape. It's not. It's not a. Um, it's not like a scene that I've seen yet. So maybe this is the future. I don't know. Um, who knows? Who knows? Whatever, man. I don't know. I don't know, man. I'm tired. I'm pretty tired. I'm probably going to talk for a little bit longer. And, um... 
probably going to be it. I don't really know what to talk about today. Like I said, I am tired. I am. Um, there was actually something I was going to talk about. I was thinking about it today. I don't know. I was, I was talking to this guy. Oh, so I was talking to this dude and he was just telling me about Netflix and um, about um, some kind of show. I don't even know. And he was just telling me all about it. And he was just telling me how much, like, it's just nonstop action all the time, all the time. It's like every scene is just, like, blowing up this, blowing up that, killing this, killing that. I'm like, dude. I was like, I haven't watched, like, movies in forever. Like, I try not to watch anything. I've tr- I try, but I last ten minutes and I'm done with it. Like, it's just not interesting at all. And, um... But when he started telling me that, I was like, dude, I was like, this is just the world because it's like, it's our attention span is getting so much shorter and shorter and shorter that everything just has to be nonstop excitement. And uh, I'm kind of living that, but oppositely, where my life itself is nonstop excitement. But it's like, man, I guess I'm doing the same thing. Well, if I look to the left and I see like a dragonfly, I'm freaking excited. And then I'm just walking and chilling and then I see a flower bloom and then I'm excited. And then I see a butterfly and then I'm excited. And then I look up into the sky and then the sun is just peeking through the trees like I'm excited. I don't know, man. Maybe everyone's just attention span is going crazy. Like maybe mine is that way. Even though I feel like I'm being, um, I'm calm. I'm chilling, like, everything I do is slower. Um, I'm aware of everything. And I'm, I'm finding, well, I'm finding an excitement in everything already, like the little things. And um, I'm not needing, like, external, well, I guess. I don't know, man. I don't need explosions and blood and guts and romance. Um, just non-stop I don't know man I don't know what it is but I don't watch I don't watch TV so I don't know I don't watch movies and I don't really I don't I don't know but to me I've noticed that over the over the recent year and a half two years like where everything is just getting ramped up ramped up ramped up like just getting to the extreme where we're just like we just need more and more and more we're just so desensitized to what the old was and we know this to be true like you look at tv and um you know nudity just increase and increase and increase which is whatever but we're just desensitizing everything to death to murder to um all kinds of stuff which is it's all just being desensitized as time goes on and it, it's really weird if you're aware of it and you watch it I always thought, yeah, I don't know, I'm not going to talk about that. But um, when I was little, dude, this is weird. This is super weird. When I was little, um, I mean, I'm talking like little, five, six, seven, eight. Like, I remember watching TV, and I would see flashes on the TV. Like, I could, like, it, the TV would flash, and then it would, it would have a word in the middle of the TV. And I would, I could see the word, and um, and I'll be like, I was like, ask my brother, I was like, you see that? He's like, no. I'm like, what? How did you not see that? I was like, Dude, that literally is like a totally different screen with the word in the middle of it. I can't remember the word, um, the word, the one that's pictured in my head right now. Um, but I used to see it all the time. I used to always see glimpses like TV programming all the time where it would flash real quick, like super quick, like that. I'm like, but people didn't see it. I always saw it. Um, I don't know if I, I, I was just, I'm just so aware. And, um, but everyone always told me that, no, I don't see it. I was like, man, I don't know what you're talking about. I, I see it. It was weird. I just remember growing up and like seeing that. It was so weird. And then now with me doing research and stuff as an adult on like MK Ultras and stuff like that, CIA programs and, um, I, uh, I know that that stuff was true. I mean, that's what, you know, that's how I looked at, you know, I don't get into, I don't spend time looking at conspiracies. I have done my time looking at stuff in the past. Um, you know, probably many years ago. 
And, um... But now I don't look at any of it. I don't care. This world's bigger than we know. And, um... If you can think it, it's probably being done, to be honest with you. So... You know, whatever. And, um... So I've done my research on a lot of stuff. And, um... But I knew it was true. But, like, when I look at words and stuff... The way I see the English language, the way I see language anyways, like, everything is telling you literally what it is. I've talked about this the other day when I broke down words in, in small syllables and stuff. But, like, you know, I always remember when you bring up, like, the TV guide. It says TV programs or something. And, like, you look at it and it, it, it's called a program that's between, you know, like, six and seven. It's a program. And it's literally telling you that it's programming you from 6 to 7 o'clock. This show is programming you. If you surrender your time, if you surrender your attention to this, if you step into this fantasy, if you look into this black box, this black mirror, you know, which kind of has to do with witchcraft and stuff like that. But um, if you, if you mirrors do, but... It's the same as like, yeah, if you look at this mirror, it's going to reflect something into your soul, which is your eyes. And then, so everything you're giving your attention to from the hour of 6 to 7 or prime time, 9 o'clock to 10 or whatever it is, 8 to 10, 9 or whatever. Like anything you're watching, it's programming you. That's what the news does. The news programs you. It comes on at certain times of day and your body starts building neural pathways every single day at these times when you're sitting in front of that tube and you're sitting in front of that mirror that black box that's programming you and you are surrendering your attention you're surrendering your time you're surrendering completely your thoughts your soul to a little black box that's being controlled by somebody else who's who's creating the content that you are watching and you're accepting it to be true. Even if you think it's wrong, if it's false, like you, your subconscious picks it up and it thinks it's real. That's why um, your subconscious doesn't understand whether something's real or not. As long as it sees it, hears it, it just takes it in and accepts it. And this is how brainwashing works. And um, it just accepts it to be true. And it puts it in that bank of information in your head, in your body, to help you dictate the choices that you make. And that's kind of why, that, that's exactly why I quit watching TV and I'm very specific at what I watch um, and kind of what I listen to now. That's why I, I I listen to music and yeah, it's a lot of it's like love stories and stuff like that, but I skip if, if I don't want it. You know, so technically I'm programming myself to be like in a vibration of love and to want love because I'm only, if I, if, the algorithm is just sending me love songs all the time and that's what I'm going to be wanting and yearning for ultimately. And I understand the concept, but I, I'm on board with it anyways because I'm looking for that counterpart. So it's like, you know, like I'm looking for this anyways. So to me, it doesn't seem like that negative, even though I know it is kind of dictating my life and my thoughts a little bit. But I know this. And I outweighed like, what else would I be listening to? A lot of my stuff is maybe more electronic-ish stuff. And so it's like, whatever. Um, I can see no whatever. Because I am looking for that counterpart. And so if all the music that I'm listening to right now is love music. Or some or summer music. Which is evidently my muse. and um, Which is my muse. Everyone knows this. Like, you know. Um, obviously. And, um... So beating around the bush here. And um, I get it. So it's like, we all pick and choose what we give our attention to. I think I think just a lot of us don't understand the, the totality of it and how important what we give our attention to, um, what it's doing to us. You know, like it's, it's whatever, man. You know, and that's why... That's why they're spending billions of dollars on three second, you know, millions of dollars on three second ads for the Super Bowl. Ads for the Super Bowl. Because they understand 
the programming. Why do you think they're so expensive? Because they're mass programming people to buy their products. The world revolves around marketing. You know? You know, I talked to an artist about a girl who was real young and then her dad just marketed the living piss out of her out of her, out of, as a um a prodigy. She's good. She is she's a prodigy. But it, it was all about marketing. You know, you get a little kid, you give a dog a brush and you let the dog just paint. You know, like that and then you market that dog as a prodigy because he can put a brush in his mouth and paint. Then if you can market it well enough, then that dog's a prodigy and you can be a millionaire, you know? And that's, this is life. This is the, the understanding of life is like, if, as long as I can get people's attention with the product that I produce, I could be anything I want, you know? I just have to have really good marketing. I got to figure out my target markets. I got to do all this, this, and this, and this. And um, I get it, you know? I just don't have the connections right now to understand that on a big scale and how to implement it. And I don't, I still want to kind of stay away from a lot of stuff like that because it's like, man, I hate to hoodwink it. Or the, you know, I don't know. As long as my, as long as what I do is authentic and real, I don't care. Um, if people want to give me money because of that, then have fun. Give, give me money, I don't care. Um, I just want to be me, and I just want to make sure, like I said, and do everything that in my power to be authentic and real and not sway to the masses not sell my soul for fame and fortune and all this stuff where if I become those things um, authentically then I'm cool with it but I, I can't sell my soul and do what you want me to do that just makes zero sense to me I'm not gonna do it never ever ever like I'll say never to that and um, it's just not gonna happen but life is cool man and like I said just watch what you give your attention to be aware of this. This is what this is, again, like I said, like when we're looking at the Twitters and the TikToks and the Facebooks and like you're married and you're on there and you're seeing nothing but these young fit girls all day long, like you're gonna start programming yourself to want those things and your body's gonna want those things. It's gonna like those things because you're creating more pathways every single time you see one of those. And if, and if you like it. You're just gonna like it more and more and more and then at some point you look at your wife and you're like you don't look like that and then you know if you don't have control over your animal side you're gonna go out put yourself in situation you're gonna start working out going to the gym and you're gonna see a bunch of girls that look like that and then you're gonna be attracted to that and then you're gonna go over the edge and you're gonna try and go holler at one of them and maybe they'll go out and then you go do something you will regret all because you just programmed yourself to like these things by giving it time and this is why everything I say is about giving yourself time. Because that's where you you love yourself more and more and more and more every single day. And you start to become confident in yourself. You start to understand yourself. You start to enjoy yourself. You start to love your height, your weight. And if you don't love your weight or if you don't love anything about yourself, you're going to go do what it takes to change it. So instead of like watching TV every single day from 5 o'clock till 10... You know, if you was to give yourself time from 5 o'clock till 10 every single night, you would become more confident in yourself. You would love yourself. You would learn how to fill your own cup. You would learn that everything else, once you felt your own cup, is extra. And you would just change your whole life. You would stop doing things during the day that you don't really want to do because you start loving yourself so much that you're like, I'm not going to put myself through that crap because I don't want to do it. And you're going to start breaking down your whole world. Do I even want to work 60 hours a week? Do I want to work 50 hours a week? Do I want to work 50, 40 hours a week? Or do I want to do something I love because I love myself and I'm worthy of doing what I love? And then if we can get a bunch of people in the world to do that, to, to live a life authentically where they're doing what they love, like truly doing what they love, that will change the world. Because if I'm doing what I love, which is art, which is helping people and all that stuff, and I create, and I'm always pushing out my product, which is nothing but love and me, and just loving the world, and then someone else is doing that with music, someone else is doing that with with food, with clothes, with 
everything like and we're all putting out the products that we really love to make and create and our love our desire our sweat our tears our time is in those products in those things like and people will start to catch on and see that and understand that and it will change the world for better because everything we're pushing out is ultimately encased in love self-love and it will be back to the good old days where we will make products that last we won't have all this extra waste where we can create a refrigerator that lasts 30 years instead of a refrigerator now what that's all about money and breaking down because we don't really care about if it hurt somebody or not or if someone's struggling and they can't afford to buy a refrigerator because we want that refrigerator to break down in eight years or seven years or right after the five-year warranty we want it to break down so they have to go buy another one and give me more money and keep this cycle going you know it's, it's all just a big scam it's all a big scam. You know, that's why I have a 25-year-old mower, 30-year-old mower. I don't even know how old it is. But it's made good. It's good metal, good everything. Like, it's freaking fire. Because it was a good product back when people took pride in the work that they did. You know? And now I'm creating stuff in there that I take pride in. It, it's all of me. It's love. It's my power. It's my experience. My life experience. It's so much more than just a piece of art. And some people will understand it and some people won't. It is what it is. But I look to that too, like with music. Like people putting their heart and soul in, in music, man. Especially these younger people that aren't big yet. Like that's why I always love, dude, that's why. So when MySpace was out, I would come home every single day. And I would get on MySpace, dude, and I would just go through pages and pages and pages of, of, of young artists, music, new music. And I would just listen to it. And I, I didn't never listen to like big name artists a lot of the times because... Because I could hear the difference. I could hear the difference between selling your soul and then creating what you believed in. I could hear the difference between, you know, doing what the people want and what and then doing what they want. What they love. And like that music to me, I connect to that. I connect to the when they're young still, man, and they're just in their basement making making music. And they're just singing their heart out and they're doing it every single day because they love to. You know, and that's why what's cool, you know, that's what's cool about college football. Same thing. They're doing it because they love the game of football and they're trying to get to the NFL. And then the, once they're in the NFL, like, it's not as exciting to me because the love, a lot of the love of the game is gone. You know, that's why like Little League World, World Series is so crazy because... The little kids, they want to be there. They love to be there. They want that. And it's a different demographic. It's just like a different emotions in that. Like, it's real. It's about the sport, you know? You know, that's what's cool about Olympics. Same thing. Everyone wants to be there. They're not making much money. You know, they're doing it because they love it. You know, that's what's cool about sports, cool about working out, cool about bodybuilding. Bodybuilding, same thing, or like, um, the fitness shows, like, a lot of those people don't make a lot of money doing the shows, like, but they do it because they love it. They love their bodies, they love taking care of themselves, they love the way they look. It takes a lot of time, dedication to, to do those things, and, um, uh, it's freaking fire, fire to see people do the things that they love and the, and the things that they get addicted to <laughs> like because it uh, you know we say their habits but man it's all the same it's all the same dude and i know this for a fact man i, I mean i come home that's all i think about like boom i get some extra money and i'm like you know what i'm gonna go buy paint you know who cares i could go buy a steak Oh, I can go buy paint. I'm going to go buy paint. Every single time. I can buy some new shoes. Or I can go buy some paint. I'm going to buy paint every time. I know. I know. It's fun. 
so fun. It's so fun. It's actually a struggle not to paint something else. That's why I have this set up the way I do is why I paint and then I come out here and talk so it eats up the rest of my day. Um, that's why I don't paint another. You know, I had to limit myself. I had to set rules where I could only paint one a day. And um, I built it this way because I like it this way. I, I like the totality of it. I like the subject that I'm talking on the subject. I'm going to listen to it for a whole day. It, it's tied to a painting. The song's tied to this. It, it, it makes it makes my life fun. It makes it cool and exciting in a reasonable manner where it's not like a bunch of it crazy different stuff going on in one day, but it's more... I would a ritual or constant things like I don't know man it's cool man it's cool I didn't work out today or yesterday I, I was gonna today um, but then I I just went and listened to my talk instead I was like you know what I don't have an hour and a half if I go work out I'm gonna be freaking sweaty as crap and um I can't so whatever it's the each zone I'll probably work out tomorrow when I get back in town and um yeah, and um, whatever, it all worked out in the end, but today was cool, man, and um, I'm just trying to make it through and just keep my head up and um, just keep being patient, man, and I think like patience for me is, is the biggest thing that I had to learn during this journey. Is be impatient and to not chase. To not chase things. And just to allow things to happen naturally. And just to allow the process of things. And understand that it takes time, you know, and that practice makes permanent. Practice doesn't make perfect, but practice makes permanent. And um, me practicing every day painting it's making my skills become more permanent and the love and desire to paint and um the things that i get from painting the healing from that i get from them uh the excitement the joy like i'm making these things permanent every day and the confidence building that i'm building every day in myself and um the taking the risks um the surrendering part the letting whatever happens happens like I, when I just kind of pour paint on the thing and just let it do its thing. And um, just kind of surrendering to the universe and surrendering to God or whatever else. I'm making it more permanent and I'm making it stronger in myself every single day. And then me talking every single day, you know, like building my confidence, getting better at speaking, getting better at thinking, um, pronouncing my words better. You know... Just loving myself, giving myself more and more time every single day, and um, just constantly building that habit slash addiction, and um, understanding that I'm worthy of my time, and um, I'm completely worthy, and if someone doesn't give me time, then that's fine, but I'm worthy of all time, and they are worthy of all time, and um, I just now understand that I'm worthy of everything, and uh, I, I didn't know that before, now I know. But it took time for me to give myself time to understand that that concept is, is real and true. And um, because I could, I get a got it tattooed on my hand, on my arm, and then just not gave myself time, and that would have changed nothing. But being that I actually acted every single day and gave myself time, you know, I, I learned that I was worthy of everything. I am worthy of my attention. You know, I'm worthy of this, I'm worthy of that, and that I'm worthy of other people's attention as well. Whether they give it to me or not, that's on them. I don't care, because I don't need that validation anymore. Because the only validation I need is from myself. And the only validation that I control is myself. And so, you know, I can fill all my needs based on myself, you know, other than the external life partner mate thing. And, um... You know, when that time comes, like, I'm willing to, you know, divert some of my attention to them. And hopefully they'll divert some of their attention to me. And um, we can learn 
to manage that. It's going to take a little bit of time, you know, because each of us is going to need a certain amount of attention from each other, and, and we'll have to figure that out, and um, it's fine. But, you know, I'm ready for the shakeup, and it'll, it'll work out fine, because I, I already know that I'm going to have to change what I do now um, to in the morning. I'll have to probably talk in the morning, and I'll have to paint in the morning. And, um, and that's cool. I'm fine with that. Um, you know, and it's going to be cool because then I can do a lot of things differently. I can work out in the morning. I can change my world where I work out in the morning. Then I get done working out, and then I paint, and then I talk. And then I kind of do my day. And, um... And then I'll come home at night and have time with that partner or whatever, or however we do it. So I don't know, man. It's cool. You know, whatever. And whatever I create and, and build and businesses and whatnot. So I don't know, man. It is what it is. I'm excited about tomorrow, and the moon is up, and I can see it. So I'll be outside tonight. Um chilling plus it's a little bit early man it's only nine so that's pretty cool for me um it's pretty cool plus i got some burritos so um i need to eat another burrito just to get the calorie calories in and um i don't know man i may do something tomorrow too um i've kind of been weighing the options um I don't know if tomorrow's the right day. I'll just see what I feel. Um, a lot of what I do, like I said, a lot of what I do, like I, I, I feel, and I haven't had the feeling yet to take this leap. And um, I'm kind of just kind of sitting back and waiting, and because um, I think I have to wait um, for the for a very specific time. And it's not so much for me. Um, it kind of is. It's kind of like a patience game. Um, and for me to be patient. And, um, and so maybe I won't do it. Maybe. I don't know yet. I already created it. I already made it. So um, it's just kind of riding around with me in my truck. And, um, and the time is meant. The time will happen. And um, I'll be okay with it. And um, it's just part of it, man. I don't know. You know, it's a lot. But... Life is fun and life is crazy and I'm just trying to make it through. Trying to make it through, you know. And I, dude, it's weird. I had a, you know, it's cool, man. You know, it's cool you meet people like when you start talking to them and um, it's just cool to meet people that under, you know, I had, a, I had someone tell me, um, so I've always had an issue with understanding how big I am. And you can take that how you want. I just don't know. I never understood. Um, I did a painting a long time ago. And I gave it to, I gave it to a woman. And um, I put my shoe print on the uh, painting. And I, until that day, I never understood what my, foot, my shoe looked like. Like as far as the size of it. And like I have a, a shoe inside that's a nine, and then I have a shoe right here that's a nine, and both of them are two different sizes. One looks pretty small, one looks big, and um, but like I just never understood like my size comparison to other human beings, and um, you know, because like I stand next to someone who's six foot, and it's like they're not even big anymore to me. Where like you know, and I'm small, short, but then you. You know, I don't know. It just depends. But it's just like, I just never know my presence. So this woman, what did she say to me? She, she was just saying that something about my presence, that I'm bigger than I think I am. And um, I've heard that lately over, over the last couple months and years. Well, not years, but like since January. That like my presence is bigger. Like I'm bigger than I think I am. And, um, and it's just always been in my head that I'm not very big and that I'm small and that I'm just little and it may not be now that I say it I think 
I thought that since I was in the corner all the time and maybe I didn't get a lot of attention or love or any of that stuff, I always just thought I was small, right? Um, but but my presence was small, or that I was just not so much physical qualities, but it kind of looks like physical qualities a lot of times. It's kind of how I explain it, but it's really like me, small as a person. Um, but now that as I grow, it's like I understand that like I'm so much bigger than my physical traits. And where, like I said, it's like I shifted from the physical thinking into walking around the world understanding that the invisible is what's real and bigger and more important. And so as time goes by, like every day I just start to understand like it's the invisible that I'm attracted to. It's the invisible that I understand. It's the invisible that I give my attention to. It's the invisible that matters. Because this vessel, these vessels mean nothing. You know, they're just a roll of the dice. And we have zero control over how tall we are. We have control over how fat we get. We have control over, you know, how much muscle we have. You know, we can put implants in there or whatever else and do all this other stuff, but that's all fake. You know? And, um, I don't know, it's just cool that people, like, because she was just kind of talking about, like, when you start to meet, like, that my vibration was high, and that I, is that, like, the people that need, the people that know that my vibration is high, they see me. And I told her, like, the first time we kind of texted a little bit, and I was like, you know, I appreciate you just letting me feel seen, because, um... You know, I've gone through this life and, and I know that everyone just wants to be seen. Like that's, you know, everyone wants to be wanted. and Everyone wants to feel seen and heard. You know, and that's a big problem with this world is, which I'm the dude who's talking about giving yourself time. You need to focus on yourself. You need to focus on yourself. But when you start focusing on yourself, you, when you start to grow, you start to become happy. You start to have find peace and love and understanding. You know, I, w- I was thinking about this today. When my little brother told me his daughter had this Minecraft world that she wanted to show everybody. And um, and then they all left and she didn't get to see, any- see it. And she was sad. I've been feeling like that today um, and-, and yesterday. Was like, I can't stress this enough. Like how much I want people to understand the way I feel. Like I feel like a fucking child. Like, and I thought about it all day today, and I was like, dude, I feel like such a child. I feel like my little brother's niece. He was like five years old, six years old, and um, that I just want to share everything I have with them, with everyone, with all people. Because I'm happy. I'm out here looking at dragonflies. Finding rocks that look like a heart. You know? Finding a a leaf that looks like a unicorn. You know, the clouds are freaking showing me a picture show. Like, I want everyone to be walking around the world in bliss like I do. Yeah, it's, it's a struggle off and on, but the majority of it is contentment, peace, and understanding that this is just part of the bigger thing, and I have to have both, negative and positive. You know, I have to have good and bad, I have to have tears and joy, I have, I have to laugh and cry, like, and being okay with it, and it's all gonna work out in the end. But I just want, pe- I want other people to be walking around like I do. I don't know why. It's just, that's why I post what I post. I can't not post it because it's like, if I don't post it, whether people care or or get mad at me or are tired of seeing my stuff, I don't care. Because I feel like a little child that I love something. I care about something. I'm proud of something. I'm going to share it. I have to share it. I don't have a choice. And hopefully if one person just clicks the button and watches it, hopefully it helps them. Hopefully they understand they're not alone. Hopefully 
they pick up some something about giving themselves time and they try it. You know, hopefully my vulnerability is someone else's strength. I don't know. I hope. I have nothing but endless hope. And if I can't give to the world, then what's the point? What's the point? Because if I'm happy and no one else is happy and no one else is loving and no one else is okay, what's the point? So everyone's going to watch my stuff. Everyone's going to get a chance to see my stuff. Everyone. They have to. I'm putting it everywhere. Program yourself with my stuff. But at least I'm going to tell you the truth. At least I'm going to tell you the truth. You can call me. You can holler at me. I'll holler back. But that's my purpose. Because there's no point in me being happy if no one else is happy. And my future's here. My counterpart is here. And we're gonna have fun. And we can just we're gonna blow the world away. There's nothing gonna stop us. So get ready. I love y'all. Peace.
like my head is underwater. What more can I say? Take the dog away and give me summer. Not another day. When the sky is blue, the smiles are out. Oh, na 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 na. Nothing gonna bring me down. Oh no. If I head to the beach, don't give me trouble. Na na na. If you never take a chance, you'll never know. Don't wait till it's too late.